Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Something I want to address today is uh, a problem that I'm seeing with uh, essentially classical uh, computer science type education as it relates to embedded systems, and that is how the main uh, code in your program is organized. And this is kind of a basic structure for the main code in a computer science program. You have your main function, which is required because the compiler needs to know where to start the program. The main function takes in a integer. Uh, it does it, its calculation, whatever it happens to do down here, and then it will return you another integer. Uh, this setup uh, makes two assumptions. The first assumption is that the main function is going to receive an integer and that integer is not known ahead of time. The second assumption is that once all of the calculations are complete, the program returns you an integer and you do something with that later. The problem with this is at relate as it relates to embedded systems specifically is the first thing is that there there's no, in a microcontroller, until it starts executing your main function, there's no infrastructure to receive this. Uh, I'm sorry, the, to, to, be, to give this out to the main function. What you could do is you could have, uh, you know, up above the code here, a global variable that's initialized to some value, and then you could technically pass the value into the main function. The, the general issue with that is that if you declare and initialize the variable here, you know what the variable is ahead of time, you know, at compilation time. And declaring it up here and initializing and then passing it into your main code to be executed later just becomes stupid. The second problem is that if you return something and end the main function, your processor will crash. If you're lucky, when the processor crashes, it'll restart and this whole thing starts over again. If you're not lucky, there are instances when the processor can just end the function and lock up. The reason for this is that after this main function ends right here, the processor doesn't know what else to do because it, it's executed all of its main code. It becomes lost and confused because there's no support structure like there would be on a full-size PC to uh, properly end the and the function uh, and return this to someplace that's uh, important. So how do you change this to accommodate uh, an embedded system? Well the first thing is you don't want to be returning anything so we want to go ahead and delete that and in since you're not returning anything, this becomes a void. Meaning that a void means that uh, don't expect anything to be returned. Also, over here, same thing, this also becomes a void. You're not passing anything in. So the next question is, how do you get this to never end? Well, a, a little trick to do that is to use a while one. So, Just like that. So how does this flow work? Well, you enter your main function. The stuff that is right here only gets executed one time. And then once you enter your while loop, the stuff down here gets executed over and over and over again. So generally, you would put right here all of the initializations and configurations for your processor. Uh, once you enter the main loop, you can configure the clock, the UART, the I squared C module, the ADCs, the PWM, etc. Anything that needs configured and set up for your processor. Once all of that is complete, you enter your main loop. The while one here is generally called the main loop. And then in here, you continuously over and over execute the code you have. Just as a general example, let's say you read a potentiometer and then you move a servo uh, to reflect the position of the potentiometer. So you read the potentiometer and then you adjust the servo. You read the potentiometer and you adjust the servo. And you just do this over and over again and this keeps you from leaving the 
uh, main function. If you're an Arduino user and this looks confusing to you, uh, let me assure you that uh, Arduino does this exactly the same way, except it hides some of this from you. So in an Arduino, the two functions you're familiar with are uh, void setup and void loop. Void setup is a function that goes right here because it only gets run once. It has the void uh, return type because it doesn't return anything. And uh, normally at the end, it has uh, two parentheses with nothing in it. Well, you could just write void in right there as well. So it's void function name void. Uh, the compiler automatically assumes that if there's nothing in the parentheses, it's also a, a void. And then a void loop ends up going right here into your main loop. So Arduino does this while one kind of loop in on itself for you. And then it exposes to you the void loop function. So, so there's, there's really no difference between Arduino and uh, most other embedded systems, just that said Arduino hides it for you a little bit better because uh, for a beginner, this kind of setup is kind of confusing. And if you can simplify it by just giving you put the code to run once here, put the uh, code that loops it on itself here, it makes it a lot easier for a beginner. So uh, thank you for watching. If you uh, like this video, please uh, give me a thumbs up on uh, YouTube. Uh, and as always, sub please subscribe to both YouTube and my website. And if you have any uh, questions or comments, please uh, leave them in the comments section, either on my website or uh, in YouTube down below. Thank you for watching.